Well, Lent has already begun, but how can we and our families really experience Lent and the Easter season to its fullest? My next guest has some tips for you on how you can do that. His new book, Celebrating a Holy Catholic Easter, a guide to the customs and devotions of Lent and the season of Christ's resurrection is a roadmap to get us on the right track. Welcome back to the program, Father William Saunders. Great to see Good you. Good to see you again, Raymond. Now, tell me, why did you decide to do this book? Last year, or a couple right. of years ago, I had you on, you had the Celebrating Merry Catholic Christmas. Exactly. Now you've got Celebrating a Holy Catholic Easter. Were these planned as a duo? They were, sort of, okay. but after the Christmas book, many people said you ought to do something for Lent and Easter. Mm -hmm. And the, same, the rationale is the same, that we live in this secular pagan culture, mm -hmm. and I really wanted people to have an easy access to the great traditions of our church. Mm -hmm. I want families to be able to live the faith and instill that Catholic culture in their homes. Mm -hmm. This is what we need. You know, when our Holy Father, Pope St. John Paul II, God rest his soul, talked about the domestic church. We need that today, mm -hmm. and this is a way to help build that. Yeah, well, I, I love that it, it not only gives you the backstory of things we take for right. granted, right. but there are new there'll be new traditions here to some people, and it, it shakes us out of the secularity of, oh, well, here comes Easter, and that's the right. Easter bunny and the Easter eggs, and it's yes. one day, and then it's over. There is this Lenten season that precedes it. Exactly. Why, are, why are those 40 days so important? And why do we miss them so often? Well, it's important because we need that period of renewal. Mm -hmm. Lent is really very intense. The idea of the prayer, fasting, almsgiving is essential. Of course, the idea of making the good confession, and I have a great examination of conscience. Mm -hmm. There really is that idea of we're ashes. You know, we, get, mm -hmm. we start off yeah. with ashes, and people come out of the woodwork at church for ashes. Yeah. But it reminds us of our mortality, our woundedness, mm -hmm. and that we really need a Savior. Yeah. But that's what Lent's about, to come back to Jesus and receive that Savior. I always look for the, the touchstones of things that we take for granted in the world today. Mm -hmm. And in this book, you do a great uh, service of connecting them back to this Lent, mm -hmm. Easter, and the church tradition, the origins of things like right. what you identify as the official food and drink of this Lent, is which is what and why. Beer and pretzels. Beer and, and pretzels. Everybody loves that chapter. But the tradition is that about the year 600, a monk was making some kind of a spread for Lent. Yeah. Now, in those days, fasting was strict. No meat, dairy products, eggs. So it was tough. Bread and water, basically. So it was pretty much yeah. bread and water, and it was bread without milk, so it was sort of plain bread. So he was making like what would be a pretzel, or not a pretzel, oh, wow. a, a a breadstick, a breadstick, and he's rolling it out. He thought, well, let's make a shape. So he thought of how we pray sometimes and the two crossed arms. So he twisted the dough, and there you have the pretzel. Now, this would be the soft, filly version of a pretzel. Right. But then there's another tradition that in the 1400s, a monk overslept as he is baking the pretzels, and they became hard. <laughs> but they were good. So there you have pretzel. And actually, the pretzel comes from pretziola, which means the little prayerful little arms. Prayerful arms, wow. So, now, the beer. Yeah, where did the beer, how does the beer fit into well, that? I want to, you, you, you pub visitors, now, pay attention to this. Now, according to the Polliner Brewing Company okay. that bought the monastery that started this tradition wow. in Germany, apparently they needed a good, hearty beverage. They, did, they gave up wine, mm -hmm. and so beer has carbohydrates, some protein, Lots of good electrolytes. There you have it. Antioxidants, Antioxidants, you say in the book? That's right. So beer and pretzels. Beer and, and you pretzel. can lose weight with beer and pretzels if you keep it all Lent. Really? Yeah. So no. go, I don't know if it's vegan or not, but go vegan. Well, tonight I'm going to have a big Lenten <laughs> celebration, right. Father. This is a very New yeah. Orleanian approach. I like this. Yes. I, could, I yeah. can buy into this. Tell us about hot cross buns, which you also talk about in the book. Well, hot cross buns. Where did buns, they come from? How do they fit into Well, again, Asia? this is more of a British tradition, uh -huh. but... They were to mark Good Friday, so they had a bread, and then they would make the cross on top of them. The, they were filled with usually fruit of some kind, like a canned, like a red fruit to remind us of our Lord's blood, or even raisins to remind us of the grape and the wine, sort of a Eucharistic mm -hmm. kind of theme. Mm -hmm. So that was just a little hot cross bun. Wow. But that's a great tradition. So on Good Friday, you could have 
Again, you're fasting, but you could have something. And it was something special to help you remember Good Friday. Wow, I love that. I love those touchstones. And again, things you can practice. You can make with the kids. You can right. take part in it. It becomes a reoccurring. And the, the smells, the tastes yeah. of a season, right. those are the things you remember going right. forward into adulthood yeah. and beyond. And it's so wonderful being a Catholic because even during Lent, you have St. Joseph's Solemnity and Annunciation Solemnity, so mm -hmm. you can have a free day. Yeah. And St. Joseph's Day. <laughs> and Sundays. And Sundays, too, technically. <laughs> okay. And so, but St. Joseph's Day, there's a tradition of having the St. Joseph's table. Right. You can have goodies and a festivity. Mm -hmm. There's a prayer service. Now, in our parish, we do that yeah. officially. But if you don't have that in your parish, you could do it as a family. No, we, we have all those great St. Joseph yeah. altars in New Orleans. That exactly. Are, you know, productions. Mm -hmm. and, they are. And parades and the whole nine yards. So it's okay. quite a, it's, and the, yeah. th those are basically Sicilian traditions. They are. It comes from Sicily. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to talk about, in the book, you dedicate this book to your dear mother. Yes. Um, and this was her favorite yes. holiday. Yes. Why and how did her love of Easter affect you? What was well, Easter and Lent like growing up? Well, Lent was very real. So in the sense that we all gave up something for Lent, we did our, in those days, you had the abstinence mm -hmm. from fish on Fridays. Right. Then also we did our stations of the cross. We went to confession. So my mother is very good about making sure Lent was this prayerful season. And then Easter, or not Easter, yeah, Easter was just a celebration. Now we mm -hmm. did the whole triduum. Right. We did that. And then, but Easter was special. We had our new outfits. Mm -hmm. And then we always had the ham, the special Easter yeah. eggs. I remember yeah. dying those. And then also the upside down cake, oh, pineapple yeah. upside down cake, yeah. which was special because for in our family tradition, you bake it upside down, but it flips out. And Jesus came into an upside down world oh. to turn it right side up. Mm. And the little pineapple reminds us of the sun, yeah. the resurrection, yeah. and the red cherry, the sacred heart of Jesus. Wow. So that's our tradition. I love that. Yeah. Uh, who do you want to read this book? What do you want them to take away from it? I would like really everyone. One, it's for priests to help us with preaching because mm -hmm. you could bring a lot of these into your preaching or teaching, but then families. Mm -hmm. I would hope young parents especially would read this book so that they can hand on these traditions, like start them now, but so that their kids have this Catholic culture mm -hmm. that they grow up in, that they take to heart, and then they'll pass on. Mm -hmm. In our world, we're fighting the battle. And so the home has to have that Catholic culture. Yeah, and prayer, fasting, almsgiving. That's the flavor that's of this the season. It that's is. really what the book's about. It ways is. to do that, ways to encounter that, ways to enrich that and deepen mm -hmm. it. Um, before I let you go, as a pastor, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're dealing with this coronavirus threat. Yes. Right. Um, you, you, were, uh, you have a large suburban parish in right. northern Virginia. I knew it well. Yes, you um, did. You were there for but, many years. But it's also a very cosmopolitan place. A lot it of is. people from around the world. What are you doing? Are there any preventative measures you're taking moving into that season? Some people, for instance, are doing away with the, the precious blood right. at, at Mass. No right. cup being offered. Right. Well, we've never done that at Our Lady right. of Hope because my mom, the nurse, always said you pass germs that way. So we've never, <laughs> you can imagine. That's why I sat behind your mother every That's Sunday exactly. and loved it. She knew what she was doing. That's right. So and I've just told people, if you feel sick, a cold, whatever, stay home. Mm -hmm. Don't share your germs. Mm -hmm. So right now, that's about the only preventative measure. I think mm -hmm. our news media likes to hype this a yeah, little bit. I agree. More people have died of the flu this year. And will. And yeah. will than the coronavirus. So I tell people, use your good sense. A lot of hand washing. Mm -hmm. I do after every mass, finish shaking hands, mm -hmm. wash hands. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good, prudent practice. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, reportage, even in the Catholic world, about, uh, you know, people, they say, well, you should, perhaps giving communion in the hand no. might be more hygienic. No. Is it? No, you have more germs on your hand. Good old mom, the nurse, said this too. Uh -huh. More germs on your hand than you do on the tongue. Wow. And the priest probably is not going to hit your tongue. No. That's very unusual. No, they're, no, most priests are really good about it. You're, you're well trained That's to right. kind of... Yeah. Pop and drop. <laughs> we also know who's, you know, you, you know the problem, children in the parish. Too. Yes, that's right. You got to watch. The snappers. Yeah, the so snappers. Got to watch yeah. that. Anyway, Father, thank you so much for the book. Thank Celebrating you. a Holy Catholic Easter in bookstores everywhere. A guide to the customs and devotions of Lent and the season of Christ's resurrection by Father William Saunders. It's available everywhere, including EWTN's religious catalog at EWTNRC.com.